first did that bring me in that defending non-conformist Labour household, where he was encouraged to question everyone and almost everything. Secondly, the loss of his beloved which made him a passionate campaigner. Hi guys, just rewrite this one out of the BBC and now covering this um, <sighs> so uh, funeral, so I've decided to actually like, start live streaming again. Apologies for that. Not courts, not title, should determine through the ballot box who is represented in the House of Trump. Dad has been endless curious about the world. And as a campaigner, he was enthusiastic, he was cheerful, and he had he often used to say that when a cry for change is first heard by those in power, they ignore you. Then they say, you're mad. Then they say, you're dangerous. But when a cry becomes a clamor and then a tide that sweeps all before it, after a while, you can't find anyone who didn't think it was a good idea in the first place. As a minister, he revolutionised our stamps. He made sure that Concord took to the air, and he turned the tap as the first North Sea oil flowed. And as a father, he was always willing to offer advice. Once he was taken ill at the Labour Party conference, and Stephen and I found him in an ambulance. He was lying on a stretcher. He was wearing an oxygen. And we set off to the hospital, and suddenly this finger came up and beckoned. And I leaned over, I said, Dad, Dad, what is it? He pulled down the mask, and he said, Now, H, about your speech to conference this week. <laughs> and I knew then that he was going to be all right. And I now know how much I'm going to miss his wisdom. Because Dad's life taught him that ideas and movements have the power to transform the world. And that is why he was such a passionate supporter of other people in their struggles. And he taught us that a better world is possible, sometimes seen clearly, on other occasions only faintly glimpsed. And that is why he encouraged so many other people to believe that that was possible. For any man, for any life, to do just that alone is to tell the story of a life fulfilled. Thank you, Dad. As a family, Dad set us off a formidable but always very human example. Highly self-disciplined, prodigiously hard-working, eloquent and unfailingly courteous, he was also terribly funny and could be very mischievous. One of my earlier memories from the 1960s is of sitting in Dad's basement office, listening to him phone his old friend and cabinet, cabinet colleague, Tony Crossland, pretending, quite skillfully, I have to say, to be one of Crossland's constituents, an acerbic, dissatisfied Scot called Alistair McAllister. <laughs> <laughs> the conversation must have been on speakerphone, for I clearly remember Crossland's cautious, deeply suspicious response, and then that moment of amused irritation when he rumbled exactly who it was at the other end of the phone. I also remember Dad took an energetic delight in the whole prank from beginning to end. And he, there were several of those against Crossland. That was another of his great gifts and his gift to us. He was never ashamed of showing his feelings. He laughed and cried very easily and was an unabashed sentimentalist. He loved a film like The Railway Children so much that the tears would be rolling down his cheeks during the opening credits. <laughs> But argument was his lifeblood. As so often, he put it best himself, writing in his diary in 1979, the idea of a political debate without personal malice, dealing with the ultimate verities of life, is immensely attractive. I enjoy it. 
understatement of the year. <laughs> that was the creed by which he lived right to the end and it shaped every part of his life. It also meant that going out and about with Dad was always an interesting experience. Any train journey or even a simple walk usually ended up in some form of collective public conversation or informal political seminar. Even a trip to Boots took three times as long as it might have done once Dad had finished discussing the history of the struggle for colonial freedom with the sometimes bemused pharmacist. <laughs> Yet even in the late 1970s, when he was supposedly the most hated man in Britain and we had a police officer guarding our, fam our family house, it was obvious to us how many people loved and respected him. For they grasped even if an often cynical press did not, both his moral seriousness and his capacity for very human connection. He mourned the death of our mother Caroline with characteristic emotional honesty and took up his political life without her. But failing health from 2009 tested his courage in new ways. Tomorrow, he would say, I must get back to normal. Normal, of course, for Dad, meant getting up at 6 a.m. to travel hundreds of miles to address not one but three meetings, sustained only by a cheese sandwich, a Mars bar, and so many bananas that at one point he was hospitalised with suspected potassium poisoning. <laughs> Strange but true. <laughs> and he adapted to a less frenetic life with cheerful stoicism, thanks to the support of his friend and editor, Ruth, his personal carers, Pearl, Kathleen and Henry, and towards the end, the amazing efforts of the NHS and the Hospice at Home movement. We all loved and cared for him, but it was the devoted attention of our brother Joshua who lifted every practical and daily worry from his shoulders and that truly allowed him to enjoy that final blaze of autumn sunshine. So now a new phase of our life as a family begins, without our beloved father and grandfather. For as long as I can remember, and it used to be hard, Sundays have been dad days, long afternoons of political discussion and family chat. Sometimes, when approaching the flat in which he lived latterly, I would glimpse his profile from the street where he sat in his big green chair. I loved the fact, especially when he had the smoking his pipe and had a mug of tea, he looked like everybody's idea of Tony Bent. It spoke of his splendid, almost old-fashioned consistency, and as Ali G and many others discovered, the resolute way in which he was always himself. Most of all, it moved me that as a father, he was always curious, never judged, but only encouraged, and that even towards the end of his life, when terribly frail, he made the effort to walk the few paces from his green chair to the window, determined to bid us a last loving farewell. All four of us were with him when he died. And that matters to us. It's a source of some comfort at the time of great grief that we were together. As a matter of fact, we were all together when our mother died with our dad as well. And it is not given to many children to be present at the deaths of both their parents all together. And it does matter because we're a close family and now we're on our own, just us and our own families in turn. And I want to say that you could not wish for a better two brothers and sister than I have, and I want to thank them for the love and support they gave our dad, as well as the love and support that we give each other. Now, a great deal is known about our dad, a great deal has been written about him, and not least, he's written a great deal himself. And in the late 60s, when he began dictating his diary on tape, I used to go downstairs sometimes in the basement and listen to him dictating his diary for the day. And I was always amazed that here is somebody who got up early, he had a full day as a cabinet minister, he was at the house till 10.30 or 11 at night, every night, and then he'd come back, then he'd do his red boxes, and then he would 
dictate his diary. And I thought, and then get up at 6.30 again the next morning, it would all start again. And I must admit, I thought that was an amazing thing to do. He only ever really relaxed in the summer, in the long summer recess, when he would be with the family and he would indulge in a bit of carpentry and make things, some of which for the roof of the car so he could campaign all the better in Bristol and so on. And that was where, how he was able to relax. The house in which we grew up, in which he lived for 60 years, 12 Holland Park Avenue, was always full of people and it was lively and uh, a wonderful place to be. But there were rules, there were routines, there was a structure and there were restrictions. And as I'm the eldest, I ran into some of those restrictions before my siblings. For example, he wanted my hair short and I wanted it long. I was a teenager in the 1960s and uh, he prevailed for a time and then I succeeded eventually. We also had some big rows. I remember one in particular. It was a Wednesday. I was 17. I'd passed my test that day and that night I took our family car and I drove out around London until 2 o'clock in the morning. And there was an almighty row about that. First of all, we weren't allowed out on a school night. Secondly, I had to be back at 10.30, even on a Saturday. So you can imagine the type of row there was when I got back. It was horrendous. And yet, and yet, three days later, when some members of the cabinet came round for dinner, Dad proudly volunteered me to drive them home. He said, oh, don't worry. <laughs> He said, Stephen will drive you home. <laughs> and I did. And I remember sitting in the car with Dick Crossman and Barbara Castle, and I said to Barbara, where do you live, Barbara? And she said, Islington. I said, well, how do you get there? And she said, well, I don't know. I, I don't drive. <laughs> and she was such a state for transport. <laughs> But I want to say that throughout our lives, he's always supported us as children and later as grandchildren. They always had time for us. And uh, as the years went by, especially after our mother died, he spent more and more time supporting and encouraging the grandchildren, all of them, every one of them. In my case, he was very supportive, my son and his music and his cello concerts, and in the case of my daughter, her political campaigning. But he was the same support and encouragement for all of our children. And of course, he himself never stopped campaigning. I know you know this perfectly well, but when he did leave Parliament in 2001 to spend more time on politics, that is exactly what he did. And he enjoyed it right up until the very end. And at a time like this, you think to yourself, what advice is it that you'll remember he gave you? And I want to just pass on one piece of advice he gave. At a time, a generation ago, when, if I can put it this way, he was not a national treasure, but he was vilified at times, in the heat of that battle, he would say to us, don't get embroiled in the attacks upon you. And he used this phrase, never wrestle with a chimney sweep. A very wise piece of advice. <laughs> which in fact had been passed down to him by his father and perhaps in turn would be passed down to other generations. Now his last speech and in fact his last public appearance was across the road in Westminster Hall for the memorial service for Nelson Mandela and he was very honoured to take part, he was very frail, you can see it all on YouTube but he was frail and he was helped to the, state, to the podium and I and just to check that he was okay. And I said, Dad, do you know what you're going to say? And he said, no, but I'll think of something. <laughs> and he did, and it was short, but it was true. He spoke about the need to fight injustice and also the need to bring hope and encouragement. And I think that that is what he did. And uh, as I said, we were all there at the end, all four of us, and the very last words that he heard on this earth were the four of us telling him that we love him. And that matters to us. And he always said, 
that on his epitaph he wanted the phrase, he encouraged us. Well, Dad, you did encourage us, and you did inspire us, and your encouragement is an inspiration, both for us and for others, will never end. Let us pray. God of mercy, Lord of life, you have made us in your image to reflect your truth and light. We give thanks for Tony, for the grace and mercy he received from you, for all that was good in his life, for the memories we treasure today. Lord, in your mercy, God of love, Lord of hope, you have created us to care for one another and to search for wisdom. We give you thanks for Tony's passion for justice, for his integrity and the tenacity in refusing to compromise in striving for what he believed to be right. Lord, in your mercy. Yeah. You promised eternal life to those who believe. Remember for good your servant Tony as we also remember him. Bring all who rest in Christ into the fullness of your kingdom where sins have been forgiven and death is no more. Lord, in your mercy. Yes. Your mighty power brings joy out of grief and life out of death. Look in mercy on all who mourn. Give us patient faith in times of darkness. Strengthen us with the knowledge of your love. Lord, in your mercy. You are tender towards your children, and your mercy is over all your works. Heal the memories of hurt. Give us the wisdom and grace to use aright the time that is left to us here on earth, to turn to Christ and follow in his steps in the way that leads to everlasting life. Lord, in your mercy. As our Saviour Christ has commanded and taught us, we are confident to pray, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power and the glory, forever and ever. Amen.
Hi guys, if you can keep tweeting this out, uh, just probably BBC is not covering this, so uh, yeah, I'm covering this at uh, the time. Keep tweeting and sharing. Thanks. Of God, uh, maker and redeemer. God, our creator and redeemer. By your power, Christ conquered death and entered into glory. Confident of his victory and claiming his promises, we entrust Tony to your mercy. In the name of Jesus, our Lord, who died and is alive and reigns with you now and forever. Amen.
really loved it. Um, I have no idea how many people she turned up for a uh, funeral. Mm -hmm. Yep, there's a lot of people here. I'll see you, but I'm, yeah, I'm not sure. I thought that uh, the wait for Tony uh, Ben happened uh, yesterday. Yeah, I'll see you. Thank you, Anya. Yeah. Anyway, thank you guys uh, for uh, being here with us. Apologies, I thought that the uh, the BBC was going to be covering the uh, the funeral, but uh, apparently not. I thought they were going to actually uh, broadcast it live. Uh, information was uh, too late that actually they were not broadcasting, so I I just I could only live stream from outside. In any case, if you can, uh, follow us on the... Uh, oh, yeah. So, uh, yeah, thank you, Miranda. Yes, if, uh, if you guys could actually, yeah, just... Uh, I am the, one of the Occupy London live streamers. If you want to, just follow us. I think it's actually um, Occupy London or OB Live. And if you want to, um, well, donate to us, that'd be great, because um, we still have a lot of live streamers who need uh, support in Baltimore and all the other ones. Um, you'll find the, um, uh, sorry, the PayPal donation thing in the, uh, on my account in, uh, in the Bamboozer. Uh, sorry for asking. My well, apologies. Uh, but we have to make do because uh, the, DV, uh, the mainstream is not actually um, doing its job.
Thanks for joining us here guys, um, but if you can, tweet this out to at BBC News or um, if it's on Facebook, the BBC has their own Facebook page, but from what I gather, they're not even reporting it on their, on their Facebook page, so perhaps if you could actually point out that there's actually something happening here. It's really disgusting the way that actually they're tweeting. Country. Remind the, the BBC who actually uh, who pays their uh, wages. I don't have a TV anymore, so I don't actually watch. Oh, excellent! Thank you, Kate, and uh, thank you, Carl. This is regarded as. Uh, The house is not being posted as local news. Okay, so it's a back page politics item. Yeah. Anyway, guys, if you can, then uh, post, um, start reading up that um, the BBC one then. Okay, I'm gonna go sorry about this. Uh, unfortunately, this is the best uh, live broadcast that you can have. So, um, uh, please, keep keeping it. The BBC will not be live broadcasting from the inside. So the BBC will not live broadcasting from the inside. Wait, could have anything. There's the most again, I've got uh, just, uh, a couple hundred people watching. Uh, yeah, unfortunately, I'm the best that we can hope for in the meantime, yeah. Instead, we had to come with you, uh, Thatcher's uh, live funeral. Okay, thank you, Scott. Excellent.
Uh, hi Gogi, I'm not sure there's going to be another public gathering in Trafalgar Square. I know there was a wake, there was a wake for, Tuf yes, for uh, Tony Benn yesterday. So I'm not sure yet if there's going to be another one today. <coughs> uh, there was one yesterday, I'm not sure there's going to be another one today. Uh, there was a, uh, a week for uh, Tony Ben yesterday. Yeah, it's a part of the club. I'm uh, sorry about that, Kate.
Okay, yeah, it's actually Dragon. They, um, they try to actually make it as, I don't know, like, control this as much as they can. But, Actually, uh, they're pointing out that um, it's actually got the, like, the live broadcast, but then, uh, yeah. Thank you. Yeah, I'm just with Occupy. I had, uh, I had about 150 people actually watching. Which is good. I, I just I turned it off, but then I thought that because the BBC would be live broadcast. But yeah. I said, no, there's no, there's no live broadcast. And I thought she was back here and I should do it. Thank you, people, for uh, joining us. I uh, I apologize. I didn't actually. Um, uh, I think I missed about uh, 20 uh, minutes of it because I thought that the uh, BBC were going to uh, do a live broadcast from it, from inside, but apparently not. I had to uh, I had to actually rush down here to actually uh, capture uh, from the uh, back entrance. I did, I um, did like uh, the speeches from from his children. Wonder what it was like to actually have that guy as your uh, father. Must have been actually, um, well, intimidating. <laughs> Thank you, Carl. Yeah, definitely, Libby. It is actually run by a bunch of uh, right wing nuts and of course the people there are saying oh yeah it's actually left wing I don't see it at all uh, I'm having no idea about that one I'm ho hopefully the BBC will actually uh, report that at least ah. Hello guys, thank you for joining us. Um, 
if you can uh, just uh, follow us at uh, uh, Twitter would be Occupy N N or uh, O B underscore Live and it's for the Occupy London as well. Ah. The BBC is becoming too right wing, so uh, unfortunately we have to uh, to do the job for them. At least we're cheaper. And if you could uh, keep uh, sending this off to uh, at BBC News. Oh, hello UK watching. Mm. Oh, hopefully Mrs. is actually uh, going to be okay soon. Oh, are they showing the BBC News now? Miracle. Oh, doggy, yes. It's uh, OB, OBI underscore live, L I V E. And it's also uh, Occupy NN, yes. Thank you, you can watch it. Oh, <laughs> apologies for this. Uh, we always need uh, more um, uh, donations for live streamers as well. If you can, if you could please uh, put the. Um, uh, the donate button for PayPal. It's uh, Nemo GBR at Yahoo.co.uk. Please, because uh, we need to um, we need to actually um, get more live streams. Uh, we're covering. Yeah, we are covering a lot of the um, uh, anti-fracking sites at the moment, the protection camps. So the more we can actually pro uh, support them, the better it is. And uh, these phones are expensive. Man, who wouldn't mind the 145 quid that the uh, BBC gets. <laughs> that would be the case if you could add an extra N uh, outside Big Ben, that'd be great. Okay, thank you, Anda. Anya, that'd be great. Jack Strong. You've got to be kidding me. Just Jack Straw and BBC, that's it? I'm looking for you. Thank you. Thank you so much. I really want to have a look. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. Lovely, lovely. 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 Is that a green people? Yeah. I've got to have a drink. I've got to have a drink. I've got to have a drink. I've got to have a better camera. I've got to have a there's a lot more you can do in Jerusalem with as much as you can open it. Um, and actually, I will walk and I'll see your thoughts. Yeah, and I think, I think actually the Sandra is there, but yeah, yeah, yeah. I thought they're wonderful. So the family is beef stuff. I know they can hear that. Yeah. I thought this is no, brilliant. Yeah, because yeah, you can hear some fantastic applause coming in. Yeah, they do, they do, don't they? They do. Yes, they do. Um, I think um, Okay. Yes, please do. Keep complaining to them. They're not for Tony. That was actually a bad. That was actually a bad coverage. So, three minutes coverage in BBC. Mm. Only.
Hey, how's it going? Ah, so, any messages? <laughs> What's been happening? So, Anthony, Anthony, so what do you think of the BBC covering uh, his Tony Benn funeral by, with a three minute uh, footage segment? Oh, I, I, I don't well know. Well done to the BBC? I, 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 I don't pay my TV license. Actually, I, I, I don't have a TV. I need to do I. But I'm thinking so to myself like that. Yeah, yeah, I know. Yeah. 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 A, lot, a lot of people in this country, a lot of people in this country pay the TV license. A lot of people pay in, the, uh, in this country pay the TV license for about what, 145 bucks a year. You know, you can't put a camera on me. I'm such a ham. I suddenly forget. Uh, okay. <laughs> Sorry about this. Anyway, anyway, guys. I don't know. Uh, the BBC covered the uh, They had a three minute I want to say something, actually. Sorry. Are we? Are we on it? Or are you on there? I just wanted to say that. Um, I. I think lots of people here have know Tony Benn, and I mean in the literal sense, I've met him. I, I've met him on a number of occasions, and one of the amazing things about him is not just simply his politics, and it's great that his politics is being remembered, but he was an amazing person, and the fact that anybody in the political classes, or in particular the ruling classes, anyone in the ruling classes who takes the time to get to know people, uh, it's just, um, my thoughts are, that's my thoughts, I guess. <laughs> but you're the, anyway, that's what I wanted to say. Yeah, thank you. That's why I'm here. I think that's why most people are here. Yeah, I was, I, mean, I was actually going to uh, just uh, stand and watch, but then I, I thought there would be, the BBC would be in there live. Apparently not. But well, I mean, geez, so, you know, the thing is, the fact that they had a state funeral in there, uh, yeah. I am um, sorry. He was he was really a wonderful person, and um, and this is you know lost somebody who many people care about. Yes. Uh, I'm not sure. And, you know, I don't mind that, but it's just when all of us in the crowd start clapping, and we see, like, somebody like, uh, um, Ken Livingston. 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 We should do a citizen's arrest, really. We got it. <laughs> One and a half million people that are burning in Iraq. I'm not sure. Uh, they did a wake for Tony Benn yesterday in Trafalgar Square. Is there going to be another one today? I'm just annoyed that I uh, should have done it. Yeah, that is correct.
it is interesting that uh, Tashi got the uh, state funeral. We don't even get uh, a live event here, but then of course that the uh, Oxbridge uh, boat race would get, would get one. Yeah. Anyway guys, I think we're going to do is actually do uh, crowdfunding because um, uh, the TUC march is going to be happening. Okay, first it's going to be the May, May Day Parade is going to be happening. Uh, it's going to be in a month's time. Another one is actually the uh, TUC march. That will be covered by us, uh, uh, us live streamers. So uh, that's October 18th. So we have a few months. I'm, I think I'm going to do a crowdfund, uh, source, uh, crowdfunding Kickstarter because uh, at this moment in time I am not very happy with the way that the BBC are covering these uh, events. So uh, anyway guys, if you can, yeah, keep uh, tweeting, especially the PayPal thing because uh, I think we're going to have to actually do a crowdsourcing. I need uh, a lot of uh, people who can actually live stream for the TUC March, probably about 10 uh, Ten of us are going to be doing this uh, in the whole route. I'm going to have to, we're going to have to start uh, planning now because it's uh, it is ridiculous. We should not be live streaming this thing on uh, uh, I mean via phone. Uh, the funeral. Nah, the guy was uh, well, was a man, a great man. Honestly, if we had known that uh, we would that we would not be able to, um, well, that the BBC were not going to be um, <sighs> doing a live broadcast of uh, Tony Benn's funeral, I would have actually asked for uh, one of our guys to actually take a camera, a camcorder, a professional one, and actually do it uh, live stream it from inside, from within the church. That should have been the case, but then no, no one's um, no one's done it. And the BBC is supposed to be the one working for this country. Ah, yes, I know you can watching. Uh, so we we at uh, Tony Benson we had the three minute um, footage on the BBC News, and that was with Jack Straw as well. So I think I'll be uh, I'll be leaving now. Oh man, 50 minutes of fame. Yes, exactly. But it's just uh, upsetting that um, the BBC is not doing this. I've been live streaming it, it had about 150 people okay. on watching me. Okay. Possibly we can actually give a, a few words about on okay, the BBC. I've got to be quick, I've got a massive yeah, sure. So what do you think of the BBC footage of three minutes with Jack Straw? Today I don't, I didn't see the footage. I just couldn't be asked, I have no idea, sorry. <laughs> I don't know what's going on. Okay, we'll do. Yeah. <laughs> anyway, guys. What did Owen say? I have no idea, because I have no idea what the footage. Uh, no, but things that I was asking, but uh, the fact that actually Owen the BBC only had about three minutes footage of uh, Tony Garfino, and that was with Jack Straw. Who was that? And, the, and it was with Jack Straw? Yeah. I thought I saw Jack Straw here. It wasn't yeah. He was there, uh, speaking Jack to... Uh, Straw, uh, Jack Straw, Martin Hodge, it's, it's honestly... If Terry I, Blair. Uh, <laughs> oh, Terry Blair, yeah. But you know, if we, if, if we had any self-respect, we'd start doing some citizen's arrest. Uh, and, uh, oh, well, that's actually one of those things. Okay, guys, thank you so much for uh, joining us. I'm going to actually, uh, uh, about, uh, the battery's about to run out, but uh, we shall see.
great life. <laughs> it is a great life. No, okay. Well. Anyway, peace out, rest in peace, and uh, hopefully, uh, okay. Tony Ben's gone. Bob Crow's gone. Guys, we need more people. We step on up because uh, come on, we're gonna end up with a bunch of uh, career politicians. These guys will save us. <laughs> Who's that? No idea who they are. No idea who they are. Okay. So, peace out, guys, and I uh, shall see you later. Bye.